invited to this festival. And uh, yeah, and uh, always we are very grateful for the films that he uh, shows with us. And today, again, is another very important film. Uh, I'm just so touched by uh, the film. And uh, I, I guess we all want to hear more about uh, this uh, film. Uh, personally, I would like to know exactly the uh, what for me is very touching, no? uh, and maybe uh, part of our culture, really, uh, uh, in, in the Pacific Islands, is respect for maternal uh, figures such as the Queen Mother. So maybe you can talk about that, and maybe you can uh, tell us more about it later. Um, <clears throat> well, as I have mentioned in the uh, in the movie, um, when I was born, um, five or six months later, uh, my paternal mother, uh, biological mother, yeah. passed away, and um, my grandparents mm. raised yeah. me um, until the day they passed. Um, so. I was practically raised in and be taken to the, the to the, the, the palace all the time, and I I think my the relationship with the Queen Mother started from there, and um, and not only that but um, she actually became a, more like a mentor. You know, and as I grew older um, and uh, started working and, and getting a life for myself, I find myself going back to her and serve her. Um, and it, you know, um, and it felt a bit more like, even when my grandmother passed away, serving her was just like looking after my grandmother. You know, with due respect for her status, um, so that's how mm -hmm. close um, she was to me. And I'll just say a, a word. Um, obviously, I'm not Tongan, so I was learning everything from Joey and from the amazing people that she introduced us to. And Tonga is interesting in that it is, in a sense, a matriarchal society. Yes. Women have the highest position in society. If there's a group of people, it's the woman outranks the men, basically. But at the same time, women are not allowed to own land. Women are in a lower position in many ways. And abuse of women of all sorts is rampant throughout the country. There's terrible spousal abuse. And that abuse extends to ladies as well. So there's this sort of mixed message of women are wonderful, but women are hardly deserving of anything. It's um, I think it's probably the, the social problem that's most common across the entire planet, and certainly Tonga is not immune to that. Wait. Sorry. Sorry. It's good. I understand that Tonga is, uh, has not been colonized. Uh, however, you know, the, I know that there are certain cultures, uh, certain influences that may have uh, may have been uh, transmitted. You've got a religion, you've got uh, let's say, I have I have a hierarchical structure. Can you elaborate on this? Because uh, from uh, a Philippine standpoint, we are more a uh, a colonized country. Um, in Hawaii, um, Premier, uh, I was asked about um, if we still have the indigenous religion. Um, um, unfortunately, our indigenous belief, um, and maybe my two Tongan colleagues over here, uh, who are actually here, might help be able to help with that, but. Um, um, since Christianity came to Tonga, um, that was um, that actually took away every single indigenous belief that we had. Mm. 
you know, the goddesses of the sun, the moon, the, you know, and all those, the, you know, um, the legends of, of the, you know, our legends of how Tonga was found, you know, uh, and, and, um, and all that was taken away because um, they thought that it's not appropriate because they came to Tonga and we were half practically, or I think half naked. <laughs> uh, all our women had their um, top, they were topless and all those things, which I didn't really believe. I, I think it's because of all the old portraits that was done by, mm. by, by white people that came to, you know, um, to Tonga. Might be Dean's um, ancestors. <laughs> but, um, <laughs> but, you know, they came with that civilization belief, you know, and they, they came and clothed us, you know, they came and covered us up. And then uh, the 21st century, they came back with bikini. So I'm totally, totally <laughs> uh, you know, confused of what these civilization is. New things comes every single time. Um, and um, and it's, it's quite hard, you know, to grow up um, knowing, I mean, there's nothing wrong with Christianity. I, I'm a true believer in my faith, you know, and I, but I, I for one, still believe in my old ancient um, history, you know, of the original history of Tonga, which is more a culture that was never, um, a barrier for anybody, you know. Um, so yeah, I hope I answered you. I'll just say a very interest. It's a very interesting question: colonization and decolonization. I'm lucky to live in Hawaii, uh, which is a beautiful place, very heavily colonized, first by the explorers, then by the missionaries, but then by the sugar growers and the pineapple growers. Uh, we have a lot of Filipinos mm -hmm. there and Chinese and Japanese. As a result of all of the colonization, the Hawaiian language was lost. Hawaiian culture was lost. The Hawaiian people were almost lost. But there's been a revival as a result, starting in the 1970s, trying to bring back Hawaiian language and bring back Hawaiian culture. And part of that has been to bring back the tradition of Mahu, or like Leitis, or transgender people, as a proud part of the heritage. And that's been really wonderful. Tonga was never politically colonized. It was never conquered. They never lost the Tongan language. Everyone speaks Tongan because they're in Tonga. Mm. But on the other hand, religion came in in a very strong way. But since it's been a continuous history, there's no effort to revitalize Tongan because everyone speaks Tongan already. Everyone is Tongan. And Christianity has just become the culture, essentially. Um, I spoke about that to one of the chief ministers of the Anglican, you know, the, um, of the main church there, a woman. And she was telling me, you, you outsiders shouldn't come in here and force your new ways about LGBT on us because we're Tongan, we believe in Tongan stuff. We believe in the Bible. And I said, but wait, the Bible wasn't talking. <laughs> Somebody brought that to you. And she said, yes, but now it is. Now it is our culture. And, and that is very much true. It is an integral part of the culture now. So um, it's interesting how even when we go to film festivals that are related to indigenous film, sometimes people say, oh, Tongans aren't indigenous because they were never conquered. <laughs> oh. So it's a very uh, interesting thing. This, the whole idea of colonizing indigenous is actually a Western idea. For people that have maintained their intact society, it's, it's different. Yeah. So those are just my ideas. Thank you. Can we hear from, from our Tongan friends? Maybe they have something to add? Yeah. Can you give the microphone to them? Mm -hmm. And uh, being away from home, uh, we know what it's like. 
how they uh, discriminate against uh, uh, transgender. So we just need to support Joey. And uh, I think uh, we are also glad that the movie came out so that people are more aware of it. Mm. Uh, were, were there any surprises in the movie? Did you see anyone you knew in the movie? Yeah. <laughs> I believe he's the band leader. Yeah. Thank you for that. Thank you. Is it because uh Tonka or Tonga? Matriarchal. That's why there is a particular, particular alienation by, uh, uh, shall we say, males acting like uh, females. <laughs> no. It's pretty much everywhere in the Pacific. Um, But you can say it's patriarchal, but uh, but really, it's that it's it's all about the Christianity belief that it's just God created men and woman, you know. But when I uh, when I actually ask, when we do like the consultation, when we argue about the Bible. And, um, and then I ask, okay, if God only created um, Adam and Eve, because they, that's what they keep saying, God created Adam and Eve, he didn't create Adam and Steve. And then I say, okay, if God created Adam and Eve, so who did Adam and Eve's son go and marry. Because surely not, he didn't go and marry an animal. Right? So there was other, maybe human being or creature or half man, half animal somewhere that he got, you know. So to me personally, you know, um, it, it's more it, like something that was created later, you know, in the mindset of people. Because at the same time, when we talk about um, gender, we're so bogged up in gender norms in a lot of ways. You know, and especially when we talk about LGBTIQ, you know, um, there's so many, um, there's so many labeling, we're actually labeling ourselves, you know, which is what we don't use in Tonga. In Tonga, when we, we, when we talk about LGBT, we just say lady. Everybody is included there. When in our association, we have lesbians, gays, trans women, trans men, um, queers, and everyone, or stri even straight people in our association. You know, so we don't really categorize them or even label them in whether you're a man or a woman or whatever, you know, um, they're just known as ladies. Whoever comes into our to our um, to our drop-in center is part of the family. Yeah. I have a question. Yes. Ah, sorry. Um, first of all, I uh, I re um, kind of reminds me of Philippine history that uh, before Spanish came to the Philippines, it's kind of like um, your culture at that time, like women have power and uh, the homosexuals are like the middle. The, the, uh, they're the ones who, uh, um, the royals, I mean, um, serve the royals. Yeah, but actually my question is, um, uh, how about the, the lesbians in your community? Um, um, for what I noticed is that most of the uh, most of the subjects. Oh, sorry. <laughs> Thanks. Uh, most of the uh, most of the uh, subjects in the in the film are 
um, homosexual men, but how about the lesbians? Um, is, do they have the same issue as the, the homosexual men? Um, lesbians, uh, let's say if, it's, if it was 15 years ago, lesbians were never, you know, um, they never came 